Sound Mind and Body is supported by My Body Tutor. Lose weight, look great, and get the confidence you deserve with your own weight loss coach that will help you stick to your weight loss plan by providing daily and personal accountability like no other service in the world. For $50 off your first month, mention Sound Mind and Body when calling 516-456-6248 or by visiting mybodytutor.com. Sound Mind and Body is also brought to you in part by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. Hello and welcome to Sound Mind and Body, a podcast where we interview interesting people about the many different ways to stay healthy, balanced, and well of mind, body, and spirit in today's crazy world with a dash of woo-woo. I'm your host, Sheila Melody, and our guest today is someone that I just met doing Sadie Nardini's Yoga Shreds Immersive Workshop. He is a yoga and mobility expert, a physical therapist assistant, and the creator of some really amazing and affordable online courses, including 21-Day Yoga Shred for Men and 14-Day Spinal Reset, among others that we'll hear about. Welcome, Tristan Gatto. Hello. How are you? Great. I'm so excited to have you on. And this kind of happened spontaneously because we met over the weekend at, in Santa Barbara. And I was immediately impressed with uh, everything you taught us and just your personality. I'm just like, and then I found out that you live in L.A. So I was like, yay, you got to come on my podcast. Even so better. <laughs> here we are. So, Tristan, you have a very interesting story of how you got into what you're doing currently. So let's start from the beginning. Um, tell me how you got into this. And I understand that when you were younger, you were... A performer, a singer. I was. I started singing at four. My mom's like, you you didn't cry. It sounded like you were singing. <laughs> so <laughs> it was right around four years old that I, I started singing. My aunt was a singer as well. She was in a blues band. So I grew up listening to classic rock and blues. And um, I remember seeing Tina Turner live at the Ritz, like 1989, oh. I think. Oh my God. When she performed. And that's like her peak period, like yes. the private dancer album. I think it was the private dancer tour. I just remember seeing her and I was like, electric. <laughs> Who is this being? Oh my God. That voice oh. is just, I've always been attracted to more soulful singers. It just, it sits well in my voice. It sits well in my brain. And that kind of carried on through school. And I was like, this is what I want to do for my life. I used to run around when I was four and be like, do you know that I'm going to be a professional singer one day? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I love They're it. They're like, who is this kid? Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to sing for you right now. They're like, what? Really? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> and they're like, wow, you really can sing. Okay. <laughs> We're going to have you sing a little something. Well, well, well uh, give us a little okay. line right now. Right now? What is your, one of one of your favorite uh, um, Tina Turner, like, how about Adele? <laughs> Adele? Oh my God. Do you like Adele? I do like Adele. Do but you want Tina as... or Adele or... <laughs> Whatever you want to do. Do all the divas? Uh, <laughs> Tina Turner. Let, let me think. Let do me all think. the divas. <laughs> uh, you must understand. Oh, the touch of your hand makes my pulse react. <laughs> Woo! I love it. Well, we'll do. We're we're gonna have What's a little. Love got to do with a it? little dose. I ran around what? singing that. You did? Yeah, I thought I was. When Tina you were four. <laughs> You thought you were in my Tina? mom's heels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. I was that kid. They're like, Oh, there he goes again. <laughs> oh boy. We're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So you were actually on the path. You were performing, you were yeah. traveling around. So then solos and choir doing musicals. So I doubled up and graduated high school early. Cause I'm like, I'm out of here. I'm done with this. Like I'm ready to do jobs. So I got jobs right out of high school as a singer dancer. Wow. And I started dancing because of Britney Spears. Oh, all the divas, you know. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, Baby One More Time came out and I'm like, <gasps> oh, my God, I was 12 at this time. <laughs> if you can map the age, you know, timeline, there you go. I, <laughs> I mean, my it. 30s. 
Um, but yeah, Britney Spears was electric. So I went from this powerhouse voice to Britney Spears, who's this amazing performer and dancer. And so I learned all her videos. I sat in my room as a kid watching, rewinding, taping TRL and learned all the choreography. And I took hers and Janet Jackson's melded it together to different music. And I went to auditions and I got jobs because I could already sing. So that was kind of like, all right. What I need now is dancing and male dancers that are good are hard to come by. Yes. So luckily I got jobs and consistently through not only just demo reels, but also word of mouth. Right. So then how did you transition from that into becoming this physical therapist assistant and yoga master, which you are now, which, and you're incredible at that as well. So what, uh, you know, how did you, how did that happen? So I taught dance while I was doing gigs, like in Pigeon Forge, Branson. I was on cruise ships as well. Oh. You know, I, I did the circuit. Okay. <laughs> I worked for Carnival. I was that oh. show boy with my Britney Spears head mic. Really? <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah, it was really funny. Um, I My sister's a physical therapist, and she has been for about 20 years. And I was telling her I was so exhausted from shows, doing two shows a day, six days a week, in some of the hardest dance tracks, and I'm singing. Wow. So it's just, it was a lot on me and I just wasn't happy with it anymore. I was about 24. Uh huh. Something tapped me on the shoulder. I don't know, like universe going, there's something else you can be doing. Right. And I'm like, okay, I'm good with my hands. Maybe I can do massage school. Uh huh. And my sister's like, don't do that. Like you can have a longer career if you go back to being like a PTA. She's like, if you want to be the leader and spend a lot of money going to school for physical therapy, cool. Or you can do PTA. So I quit performing cold turkey and went right back to school. Wow. So all my money went there and I was broke. <laughs> that must have been like a really uh, drastic transition for you just mentally because you're you're out there performing and everything. And yeah, you might have been you know tired, but still then going from that to like studying all the time. I mean, it was hard because I went from singing and dancing on stage and making, you know, 1200 a week <laughs> uh-huh. to uh, four or 500 a week in Jacksonville, Florida and waiting tables and then doing my, uh, what do you call them? The rotations, like medical rotations in the oh. clinics for free, like 40 hours a week oh. for 16 <sighs> weeks. Oh my gosh. And then running to the restaurant to wait tables at night and then go home and do it all again the next day. Wow. And deal with people who are like, you forgot my wine. <laughs> and you're like, okay, I'll be right back with that. Sorry about that. I only have 10 tables. <laughs> <You're> like- <laughs> I was like, just breathe. Breathe. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> and in that time I was going to school, I, I remember I saw Eat, Pray, Love. And I was like, I need yoga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like sitting with my like ramen noodles because that's all I could afford and watching that movie. And I'm like crying into my soup. <laughs> I'm like, oh God. <laughs> but I need yoga. <laughs> it's true. Like not performing yeah. was like suffering a death. Oh, and it, yeah, I, I bet. I couldn't just go, oh, I'm just going to give this up. Screw it. I'm going back to performing because it was easy. Like, but it wasn't. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know? right. The money was good, but the lifestyle wasn't easy. Yeah. And I wanted more. You wanted a maybe a more healthier lifestyle, which you could get that with the yoga. Right. right? And I'll, I'll tell you, the interesting thing is that going through the program, nobody can take my knowledge away from me. Right. It gave me a deeper and more seated sense of confidence and self-worth than the entertainment industry. Cause we know living here in LA, how brutal it is. Oh yeah. No matter how good you are, how pretty you are, there's somebody who is going to crush your soul. <laughs> Be like, no, that wasn't that good. You were a little flat on that. And you're like, right. didn't you do that number? <laughs> yeah. Or they'll be like, you know, your eyes are the wrong color. I know? drop F-bombs and namastes. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you know? This is, we can do an explicit, uh, you know, explicit language on here. I don't but, care. But, you know, uh, yoga was the first thing when I took my first class that I was like alive again. Mm. I was using my body. I was, I, and I didn't have to be on. Yeah. It didn't matter. Nobody was looking at me. Nobody cared. You were I could in just your do own what world. I wanted to do and be in my body and sweat and move and stretch and leave feeling like awesome. And then I became part of a community. The Jacksonville yoga community is actually really awesome. Mm-hmm. I trained at Yoga Den and they were fantastic to train with. Cool. Like just awesome, awesome people. So I got such a nice foundation. So it really like shifted and it was supposed to be yoga for the PT. 
uh-huh. and it kind of flip flopped. Oh, <laughs> it was like yeah, all the PT yeah. adds into the yoga because I'm like, I started teaching. I was like, this is, I can do this. Cool. Oh, cool. And my classes were packing out. So, so you got your yoga just a basic yoga yoga certification in it Jacksonville. Was, a, was it what was it? Um, was there a certain type? It was a 200 hour training and it was a blend of their brand, which was mind body and, um, their sun power. Mm -hmm. So like a blend of Kripalu and Baptiste style, a little more alignment safe. Um, and they had like Bhakti flow and they had all these different varieties of yoga that they brought into it. And it was really fun. I did the three week, um, immersion right after I graduated my PTA program Uh huh. and, uh, my first three days into that program, I had to take my boards and I came oh back, my God. I came back, there was four, four hours in the morning. It's 200, 200 questions, 50 don't count. You don't know what those are. I came back and we did a class and I laid on my mat and just cried and, oh. and I was like, I failed. <laughs> my life is not going to start. Oh my God, this was so hard. And like a week later, it was like past, past. <gasps> I was like, yes. You were like, thank you. Thank you. Oh. Namaste. Yeah, namaste. Namaste. I was like, yes. life begins again. Cool. So then, all right. Now you have your, you're a PTA and you're yoga certified. Yes. So how did you get from there to having this incredible, all these programs that you have online and, and building your business into what it is now, which is really unique. And I, you know, I've taken a lot of yoga courses. Um, and I, I adore Sadie Nardini because she's, she's very unique, not only knowledgeable, but unique and also just doing it all, you know, like she's so inspiring and you're like the male version of her. That's funny because we we say that (laughs) and we're, we're best friends. So it was, uh, I love it. It was just a match made in heaven. I was like, she's my yoga wife. So I'm t- her yoga husband. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us how you guys met. So um, I was an ambassador with Lululemon in Jacksonville, and they supported me going down to the Yoga Journal Conference in Hollywood, Florida. Uh huh. And um, I had no clue who she was. Right. At all. I ended up seeing her at a restaurant the night before. I was with a group of friends that we were taking the same classes. We figured out our schedules. We stayed in the same hotel room. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, that girl is really rad. Yeah. Like, she's I want to got... know her. I love her style, like blonde mohawk and looks like a white Grace Jones. I'm yeah, like, yeah, I she's... love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, we gay men are attracted to powerful women. I don't know what it is. <laughs> like Cher, Tina. You know, right. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, my friend was like, she's great with anatomy, biomechanics. You'll really love her. You should check her out. And I said, ah, oh, next time uh-huh. I ended up in an elevator with her. And I was, I was like, I want, do I say like, Hey, are you Sadie Nardini? Like I'm going to yeah. be one of those people. Cause I didn't know how those yoga instructors were. I've never been to a conference and they're kind of, you know, a mini celebrity, like you don't want to over approach people. Right, right. Exactly. Like here in LA, when you see somebody you're like, I love what you do. And yeah, like, you don't want to eating be... French fries. <laughs> I know exactly. You don't want to bother them really when they're yeah, on their I'm like, nope, off. I'm that guy. I'm yeah. that guy. I'm like, no, hi, I'm going to say hi to you. I'm like, yep. <laughs> cool. And I bet she's glad. So we said hi in the elevator and I was like, where are you from? She's like, Brooklyn. I'm like, oh, I'm from Buffalo. And we just blah, 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 for a good 20 minutes she was she was with someone she was seeing at the time i was with a friend of mine and it's like nobody else existed it (laughs) was just the sadie and tristan show and it's kind of been the same ever since (laughs) and we just continue to work together with each other um because i taught anatomy workshops and alignment workshops for my studio back home and i said i do teacher trainings do you need anybody Ah. and i would like to train with you more and she's like yeah totally come to new york so i started flying to new york regularly and teaching co-teaching with her and doing anatomy stuff and it just kind of evolved from there and then she ended up with daily ohm Uh and they needed a men's course and she said i have somebody perfect for you check out my best friend, Tristan, and uh, we're going to do the 21 day yoga shred for men. And that was the, the launch. That was the first course that we released. And it was pretty incredible. It is incredible. And the yoga shred that she developed is just absolutely, it's so powerful. It's so, um, it's transforming. I mean, I, it's a different way to do yoga. You get, you get everything with, but with safely and very effectively after just doing this four day immersion, 
I'm still sore, you know, like my abs are sore and my butt is sore. And I was like, I didn't really do that much. Yeah. (laughs) It was like I did, I did three, you know, one class um, on, like we did three classes basically. And then your workshop, which was doing a bunch of squats, but (laughs) not like it wasn't that difficult. the best thing in the world. Yeah. You want a nice butt, just squat. Just squat. (laughs) With proper mechanics or else it won't work. That's what you taught us too, how to do that with proper mechanics. And also what you talked about was the heart rate. So Mm -hmm. let's just give a little tip to the listeners about the heart rate and why it's important. And, you know, why would you even monitor your heart rate? Sure. Well, and when we looked at doing the yoga shred and and sh- we're figuring out what we want to put in and, you know, I was always familiar with Tabata because I tried a little bit of CrossFit. And I wanted to see what the woo-woo was about. Yeah. I was exhausted and my body hurt for a month straight and not in a great way. I was right. like, now I'm done with this. Like my joints are going to be toast. Yes. Especially being in the physical therapy field. Like I know once your joints are done, they're done. Yeah. You That's don't it. get a second you chance don't with joints. Get them. You wear them out. You got to get them replaced. Yeah. And if they can replace them. Um, there's so many health risks associated with physical activity. You have to know how to, especially if you're working with people as a fitness professional or a yoga professional, that's why there's certifications and trainings because you need to keep the public safe. Right. You need to know that if people are on beta blockers or blood pressure medication, or if they're diabetic, those things are all assessed. Anytime you work with a personal trainer, when you come in for physical therapy, we assess all of it Mm -hmm. because it's really important. It could be detrimental, too much exercise or putting people in a state where they're in distress instead of like a target area where they're safe and they're getting that cardiovascular benefit. Right. As opposed to like you're gassing them out and they're going home and having a heart attack. Yeah. Right. Which is, no, not good. No. Yeah. Be like, come here. We'll put you. On. I know. It's not just about, oh, we got to like work out and be, you know, panting and, you know, my heart has to be beating. It There's there's a, a, a more defined science to it and it's not as crazy hard on your body as you, you think it would much. be. Yes. Exactly. You need enough, but not too much because right. it can become taxing and detrimental to the body and put you in a place of uh, stress. Mm-hmm. And actually, instead of it being good stress, it becomes bad stress on the body. The body stops shutting down. We've even seen in the CrossFit field, the rhabdomyolysis where your oh. muscles break down and start putting protein in the blood. And then you're you, your whole body goes septic. You toxic. end up in the emergency room. You can die. Yeah, and people you have die. died. Yes. It's, it's scary stuff. So Not how can it. we find stuff that or programs that build our body and keep us maintenance for a long period of time, but also looking good because that is important. We are a world of aesthetics. Yeah. And we it's okay, but good. why not um, embody all of it? Healthy mind, healthy body, healthy look, healthy approach to life. Right. And the way so. that somebody can just can uh, determine their maximum heart rate is by taking 220 minus their age. Mm -hmm. And that they should never go above that, correct? Um, It's a guideline. It's a guideline. It's a guideline. It's good to know where it is. If you are a more athletic person, your Mm -hmm. maximum heart rate might be a little bit higher because you've built up the stamina. Right. Now, someone who is not as active, is more of a couch dweller or just... A couch dweller. You know, couch dweller. (laughs) I don't want to say couch potato because I hate that word, but couch dweller. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> couch relaxer. <laughs> I'm trying to be like PC and kind to those people I like because it. I want to be inclusive instead right. of like, oh, you don't do anything. You don't belong. Yeah. No, you do belong. And please, you're my favorite client to work with. Yeah, I want to work with the people who have not done much in their life. And they're like, whoa, because they have a bigger awakening than people who are fit. Yes. Because they're like, oh, I'm used to this. And they're a little more uh, closed off in their thinking. Yeah. Because thinking. I've been doing this for years. Uh, that's Athletes true. are the hardest to work with in the physical therapy field. I bet. They're like, I've been doing this and I'm going to keep. And I'm like, okay, don't listen to me. I haven't only been doing this for years. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, just trust me. I've got yeah. you. That's my job. So it's the same. And, um, you know, putting people in a target heart rate, that's the great thing about the yoga shred is that mm. it puts you, you have a guideline of mm-hmm. what to go by. And then you can also do the rate of perceived exertion, which we I showed you, which shows you the levels of where that person is at because it's subjective. Yes, that's true. And it gets true. you to communicate with your client. Right. And knowing where they're at and also track their progress. Yeah. Which is beautiful. I love it. So 
we're going to take a break. And then when we come back, we'll talk about some of your newer programs that you're developing. Awesome. Namaste. Hey, it's Tim Edwards with the Inbound Podcasting Network and producer of Sound, Mind, and Body. Just the fact that you're listening to the Sound, Mind, and Body podcast tells us that you enjoy consuming your content through your ears. Now, if you're a podcast listener, you're a perfect fit to enjoy audiobooks. So for you, our listeners and official members of Sheila's Woo Woo community, Audible is offering you a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial to check out their awesome service. Give it a shot. You've got nothing to lose. It's absolutely free for 30 days, and you get a free audiobook to keep even if you don't continue with the subscription. Support Sound, Mind, and Body by visiting audibletrial.com slash inbound. That's audibletrial.com slash inbound. We'll include a link in the show notes, or just click the Audible banner at soundmindbodypodcast.com. Hey everyone, Sheila here to tell you about a very special offer from My Body Tutor, a weight loss program that is 100% guaranteed. Yes, you heard that right, 100% guaranteed. I interviewed Adam Gilbert, founder of My Body Tutor, on episode 19, and I was so impressed with this program that I asked Adam how we could work together, and he is now offering our listeners $50 off the first month. Plus, he offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you really have nothing to lose except some of that stubborn weight. And you know you want to lose those few pounds, right? I certainly did. I signed up, and after one week, I lost two pounds. I'm so excited. So try it. Go to mybodytutor.com and sign up. Tell them Sound Mind and Body referred you, and you will immediately be credited $50. Or go to the show notes on this podcast, and the link will be there. And it's also on my website, soundmindbodypodcast.com. Let me know if you're signing up. We'll do this together. Mybodytutor.com. On the next episode of Sound, Mind, and Body... I speak to transformational psychic medium, Marla Fries. People ask me, well, what do we do about our intuition? How do we really pay attention? Well, I'd say start in the shower because I'm always getting downloads in the morning when I'm in the shower. Right. And I have to make a notepad. Oh, you need to make a note about this. You need to do this today. It's quite extraordinary if people really pay attention to it. But it's like tuning a fine dial. But it literally is tuning the frequency to be able to hear clearly. That's next week on Sound, Mind, and Body. All right, we're back and we are talking to Tristan Gatto, who is a yoga and mobility expert. He's a physical therapist assistant, and he has some amazing programs that are online courses that everybody can access. So, Tell me, what would somebody do if they want to take a course from you online? What would you recommend they start with? So the 14-day spinal reset is what I really recommend people starting with, mainly because I built it from physical therapy and yoga. I was just really seeing a lack of um, marrying the two together. So trying to bridge that gap between the Eastern world, Western world, because there's a disconnect in the thinking of physical therapy and it's these exercises and they, it can become very monotonous and boring mm-hmm. and most people don't follow through with their exercises. I'm like, did oh. you do your exercises? And they're no, like, yeah, not so much. Um, yeah. I, I tried. Right. <laughs> I can, I understand that. And yeah. some people are so intimidated by the word yoga or they see, you know, the person wrapped in two and balancing on one fingertip on Instagram <laughs> and they're like, I have to do that. That's no, my body doesn't need, I can't even tie my shoe. Yeah, that's the thing. A lot of people think you have to be like this really super flexible, able to put no. your your head, your your foot behind your head and all. Right. And that's not really what it's about. When right? people go, I can't touch my toes. I'm like, perfect. You're who I want. Come <laughs> I to me, it. please. Because yes. I will help you with that. Because the body has to be unraveled slowly. And that's what the spinal reset does. It's a progressive program. It starts off very gentle and it builds. And I built it in a way that you can create your own spinal maintenance program. 
if you want to double up days, if you want to just do one day and repeat it for a while until you move to the next level, Mm -hmm. I get feedback from hundreds of people. And now we have 12,000 people who have done this program, which is amazing. Oh, that's great. And people coming to me going, this was better than physical therapy. This really helped my back. Finally, a program that is systematic and slowly unravels the body. I've got way more mobility. My pain is down or gone. Wow. I'm like, oh God, I'm going to put physical therapists out of work now. <laughs> They're going to be real mad at me. <laughs> but no, it. In I had like other PTAs and physical therapists reach out about that program going, this is perfect for back patients. This is, this is great. This really can be beneficial for a lot of people. So that was my goal to reach a lot of people instead of just doing one-offs in the clinic. Yeah. How can I marry the yoga and the PT together? So that's a great place to start. And then mm-hmm. I move them over to my 21 day yoga shred for men, which is not just for men. Women can do it too. And good. I do have women that do it and they're like, Oh, I love this too. Or I'm like, do it with your husband. Yeah. It's fit. Couples stay together. <laughs> you know, fit families stay together. That's true. Yeah. And, um, you know, I had a couple reach out to me that were like, we're 71 and my wife does it with me. And he's like, you'd say, don't worry about the cricking and the cracking, but he was like, it's just there at my age. Well, so, that's okay. At least they're moving their body, right? Absolutely. And that's the goal. Staying moving. I always say motion is lotion. Yep. You we, have to keep moving. Yes. We heard that before on the Inform Fitness podcast with the chiropractor that works in the New York office talking about low back pain. And he's like, motion is the best joint lotion. Yes. You absolutely. know, like people who are in pain and everything and they don't want to move and then it just freezes up and they just protect it and then they don't and then it creates other problems with other muscles that are supporting it and the way that they're walking or the way that they're standing or sitting or whatever you know and about 80 percent of people is going to experience back pain in their lifetime i think the statistics are even higher than that yeah and uh, you know when you're first in a flare-up or something like that you're going to want to maintenance that and protect it but then eventually you have to get it moving and you can get these uh, courses on your website. Uh, you can get them on dailyom.com. Dailyom.com. And it and you just look up Tristan Gatto. Tristan or... Gatto, 14 day. You can Google 14 day spinal reset. Okay. You can Google 21 day yoga shred for men or yoga shred. You'll pull up Sadie, okay. which is great. I right. recommend her. Highly recommend her. I know. As well. I've done her. I love her courses too. And she, both of you together, I mean, have got me into. I'm going to develop my own course. <laughs> I love this. Awesome. I love that. I want to just do this. It's yeah. so healing and it, it's for everybody. You know, you can go as hard as you want or you can kind of back Absolutely. off like you it's said. All, and it's all inclusive. Yeah. You don't have to like do it every single day. You can go, okay, I'm going to do this one for a week and then I'm going to move on to the next one. You Absolutely. know, but it's so affordable too. Uh, so what are the um, courses that you have coming up? Like, did you have a new one, 21 day total mobility reset? Yes. What is that one about? So that one's really awesome. I'm actually in the process of filming that. That should be done and finished by the end of this month. That's the goal anyway. Cool. But it's taking my PT background and teaching people how to do self-mobility drills, uh, kinesio taping, myofascial self-release, basically maintenance of your body before and after your practice or your fitness practice, maybe before you run people who sit at desks who are Mm. stuck in patterns Mm -hmm. that need to move and function. But it's always better to do some manual stimulation to the body as far as tissue work and releasing tissues before you start to move in and stretch and strengthen. Because if you're already in a compensatory pattern or you're moving in a specific way that's creating pain or um, dysfunction, Mm -hmm. you'll begin to get into those. You're building around it initially. If you don't unravel it first, reset Yes. That's why I love using that word because you want to reset and start over yes. and then build new foundation instead of just, it's like... Instead of kind of forcing it, trying to force it into what you think it should force be. It. It's like driving a car and never changing the oil. Yeah. You got to, oh. re- you know what I'm saying? It's got just it. like maintaining our bodies are kind of like cars. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. But it's so true. Like you wouldn't do that to a car because you know it will eventually just give out. Some people take better care of their cars. Than themselves. Yes. Oh, it's true. It's so true. And so what is this new one that you're doing after you finish this 21-day total mobility reset? And then your new one will be 
the 30 day badass body reset. Yay. I love it. And that's really because it was more for selfish reasons because I want to give myself a reason to get myself back together in 30 days. Okay. Because, you know, you get off track. You start mm-hmm. eating pizza and cookies and yeah, exactly. ice cream and a couple you margaritas. Know, my, my, I'm, I'm Sicilian. You know, I like my chicken parm and it's, you know, <laughs> gluten and fried and cheesy goodness. And I'm like, oh, oh yes. And then it sits with you and you start. It's true. What you eat, how you feel your body depends on it can affect your mood mm-hmm. your stamina it can i think there are days i just walk by my yoga bat and go mm, no <laughs> i know <laughs> you do and then before you know it four weeks have gone by yeah. and you're like oh no i haven't i'm too busy and you're getting when you get busy and even after doing this four-day workshop but i was not on my typical schedule and so i had a couple bars you know just having a little bit of extra sugar every day which yeah. you can't avoid it when you're doing a process thing of any kind even if it's super healthy and then all of a sudden, I'm craving that little bit of sugar now. Oh, well, I'll make this choice instead of that healthy choice. So I need to get back and just eat a bunch of broccoli, you know, this week and right. try to get back into, and you know. That's the great thing about the badass body reset is because every week is progressive. There's mm-hmm. over 40 plant-based recipes. Oh, cool. They're gluten-free, dairy-free. There's a lot of vegan options, healthy fats, a lot of proteins that are in there that are not animal-based proteins, but I do offer that option for people because right. some aren't ready to part with meat. And yeah. You don't have to. It's more so to incorporate plants naturally into your diet mm-hmm. instead of going cold turkey and being miserable. Yes. And being miserable with yoga or hit training movements. You've got to slowly reset the body and open up. So starting with 10-minute videos the first week, second week is 15-minute videos, so progressively gets longer and harder. Mm-hmm. Third week, 20-minute videos, and then the last week, 25-minute videos with a rest day per week and right. daily inspirations. I put together a personal nourishment practice, which I personally do. Mm-hmm. So it's suggestive if people have more caloric needs or less, depending yes. on what their goals are. They at least get into a routine of eating a certain way, having certain foods for breakfast, having carbohydrates in the afternoon Mm -hmm. just for a little extra energy reducing the carbohydrate at night Mm -hmm. and introducing more plants in the evening so that you expel all the garbage in the morning if you you don't wake up with high blood sugar like an insulin stabilizing the blood sugar so and a lot of people don't know how to do it and don't have a lot of time so let's keep it short sweet and consistent and people are like oh that's great but can you teach me how to do that Absolutely. So that's where this was born from. And knowing that you can look fit, eat well and be healthy in less time and do it in a month, especially with beach body season coming. I know. (laughs) We're here in LA. Everybody's at the beach. And some of those bodies, I'm like, oh, (laughs) I mean, I teach yoga. (laughs) Yours, your body looks hot. You you look great. What do they say? You could bounce a quarter off that. Yeah, right. (laughs) I was like, I don't know if that's appropriate, but well, let- <laughs> what do I know about appropriate? <laughs> well, let's talk about, okay, so sure. this is a great transition into how do you stay of sound mind and body in your life? And this is obviously something that you want to do for yourself too. You want to do that 30 day reset. So what are your typical um, daily routines and practices? A lot of tequila. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, I, I find I want more knowledge. Mm-hmm. But when I think about studying, I'm like, uh-uh, I can't. My, no. Yeah. Even when I've got the time, I'm like, no, my brain doesn't want this. So I've made a habit of putting, I got my Audible subscription. <laughs> I love Audible. Barks. We love Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. And um, I go outside in my neighborhood, which is really pretty and residential in Toluca Lake. Yes. You know, you're familiar with this yes. area. Yes. I put my tunes in. I leave one ear open because if you're walking, leave an ear open just in case, you know. Right. People are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so and also just a little hear safety the tip for the, re- for, you know, the listeners. Oh. My aunt was your... like, she's into martial arts and self-defense. And she's like, make sure that you leave one ear open. She's like, protect oh. yourself. I was like... I'm in a residential area, but it can happen anywhere. True. So just want to throw that tidbit to you. <laughs> <laughs> but I walk around and I listen to audiobooks and I'm able to retain it. I'm out in the open. I'm letting oh. my brain just kind of flush out. 
I love it. And I'm able to retain stuff instead of sitting in my home and I'm thinking about what I need to do at home. Yes. Or like, I'm going to go get something out of the refrigerator. Or, yeah. You know, we do that. Or I'm going to go take a nap or do something other than learn. Yes, that's so true. So that's that's one of the things I do. Um, I like a lot of self-care. Mm-hmm. So I'm like big into face masks and facials and massages and and sauna candlelit bathtubs with some jazz music and some wine i'm like i'm so cheesy it was like this hashtag this why i'm single (laughs) (laughs) i'd be like like, i need my beauty regimen sorry (laughs) i'll see you in two hours (laughs) <laughs> but it's so important. Self-care it, is do. so important. You only have you. Nobody yeah. else is going to do it for you. Right. And if you sit there and go, oh, I don't have time. It's too expensive. No, it's not. There's TJ Maxx. <laughs> 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 so they sell true. good products there. I, I hate to tell you, but they really do at I a, a cost effective. Yeah. When you were poor in college, you learn how to do things <laughs> on a budget, still look good and eat great. There's you figure TJ. it out. TJ Maxx, I love it. And that's for the whole house, too, people. I'm like, I need a kickback or something. <laughs> I know. Audible, TJ Maxx, Home Goods. <laughs> home Goods. Yeah. Um, my yoga practice and fitness practice has always been part of my life. So I know ne- I've never not known activity and movement. I've been mm-hmm. moving and shaking since I was four years old. So that's something that comes very natural. And also, I really like cleaning my house. I like making it look really pretty and I have my oil diffusers going and I've got like real chill beats and, you know, awesome. I love Spotify. It feel good, right? Doesn't it? It does because you're cleaning your space. You're tidying it up. Like my best friend who is a yoga instructor and teaches massage and aesthetics, she goes, I'm just cleaning up my piles, both emotionally and physically, like clean up your house. Yeah. Not just your physical house, but your internal house you know, clean up the crap. So pick up your piles. I like that. Yeah. If I don't have a chance to, to spend a day cleaning my house, doing some laundry, whatever, just putting things back in order, I do start to feel more stressed. You know, you start to feel like it's piling up on you a little. Your outside represents your inside. That's right. I, I'm with you there. From your car to your home, to your job, right. to your relationships. And my car, I need to get it clean, by the way. <laughs> it's, the, it's pollen season. <laughs> You wash and then two hours later, you're like, really? What a waste of $20. (laughs) Really? So, all right, let's go to the other questions. Perfect. All right, what's a favorite? I talk too much. (laughs) No, you don't. We're going to go, we'll go have a margarita later. There you go. And I'll be sitting here for five more hours. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure everybody would love it. So, what's a favorite sound? Favorite sound? The ocean. Ah. I remember as a kid, we, we went down to Florida every year because being raised in Buffalo, New York, all you hear is birds and turkeys and cows. <laughs> so I grew up in like Amish country. Birds and turkeys and cows. Birds and turkeys. Uh, my family's avid hunters and fishers. So oh. we have like all those animal heads on our wall, oh, like God. two deer and a turkey and a coyote and a, <laughs> and a duck. And it's kind of morbid. <laughs> I, I have a resin deer head with bronze antlers in my home. So I'm kind of throwing it back to childhood. But yeah. like being very PETA about it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. So um, I remember when we first went to Florida and I remember going to the ocean and just hearing that. Uh, And you know, nowadays it reminds me of, thank you. (laughs) I'll be here all night. (laughs) I just, it reminds me so much of the Ujjayi breath in Ah. yoga. And so I call it the oceanic breath because I can visualize that and you take people there who've experienced the ocean and it's one of the most powerful things on our planet. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ocean is huge. It covers how much of our our planet, like 70%. 70%, And we're 70% water. Right, right. Hey, correlation. Yeah. (laughs) The Ujjayi breath. Why don't you just take a moment to explain that to the listeners? Ujjayi breath is done through the nose on the inhalation and through the nose on the exhalation. But the exhalation, you narrow your throat as if you're fogging a glass. And so it presses out through the nose. So So it's like Darth Vader. You know, when you're like really annoyed with somebody and you're, I don't want to kill you. (laughs) Namaste. (laughs) Like going to keep it together, but I'm going to throat punch you. Namaste. (laughs) Because it makes a noise. 
<laughs> so you know that you're irritated. <laughs> if you're like, oh, this is a whole group of irritated yogis. Oh, no, that's just Ujjayi breath. It's that oceanic <laughs> breath. Chill out. <laughs> chill out, brother. <laughs> it's the chill out breath. <laughs> chill out I like breath. it. No, but it it's makes also you feel a centered. warming breath, too, because it keeps the heat in the body mm-hmm. as opposed to an open mouth exhale. Okay. Did you know that? You can cool and warm your body with the breath. Yes. They're like monks can sit in the snow for, th- for however many hours and heat their bodies. I'm like, that's nice. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's but cool good. to know. Yeah. Good it's to good know. trivia. Okay. So next question. What's a favorite memory? Favorite memory. I'd have to say I was in seventh grade and I sang this huge, huge gospel solo. Ooh. And the singer that I mimicked was Tina Turner. And at that point, I had that range because my voice hadn't changed yet. So I wailed out this gospel song. And it was, I Shall Not Be Moved. Oh, my gosh. And the chorus was behind me going, I shall not be moved. And I'm like, just like a tree. Like, just wailing for Whoa. Jesus. And it was funny how afterwards I had a group of black ladies come up to me and go, <laughs> I don't know what little white boys sing like that, but dang. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, I can actually sing. Cool. Oh. Dang. All right. Because you know, like, you yeah. know, if you take it to church and somebody is like waving. You, you know, you, you know, got I, it. But I grew up with that. So I knew, you know, it's like, that's the highest compliment ever. Ever. <laughs> I'm like, I wish Tina Turner was here. <laughs> she would love me. <laughs> you were channeling. Tina and I, best friends. You know, Tina, Tristan, kind of same thing. You were channeling your They used to your pick on me and call Turner. me Tristina. Tristina. In oh, they were mean. Ah, But maybe I shouldn't have dressed up like her when I was in fourth grade. But <laughs> kudos to my mom hey. who made my dress and got my fishnets and heels. And she's like, all right, if you want to do this, all right. Uh, and that's people's fondest her. memory of me from childhood. I won't live that down ever. Well, and now I still won't because now. Now you own however it. However many people have heard this. <laughs> but now you own it. Namaste. Yes. Yeah, own who you are. Who cares? Exactly. I'm not hurting anybody. No. If your kid wants to wear some high heels, let him explore. If your daughter wants to wear boys' clothes, let her explore. That's the beauty of life. Yes, I totally Don't conform people to what you want. Exactly. Let people be people. Yes. And then they grow up to be amazing people like you. So, oh, great. Third question is, what's a favorite place? Favorite place anywhere that's tropical. I like to be warm. I Mm -hmm. hate being cold. So anywhere where it's serene and beautiful, lots of colors, heat from the sun, fresh air, that's kind of where I thrive and find that I'm most at peace. Nice. And I I gets to that point where I'm like, I need a vacation. I got to go somewhere. Yeah. Cayman Islands, Mexico, anywhere where there's like crystal clear blue water, Bahamas. Uh Uh-huh. So I have family in the Bahamas and that's kind of cool. cool. So I get to go down there once in a while. That's awesome. It's a long flight. It is. From LA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But well worth it. Yes. Then you can relax. So. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so final question. Dun dun. What's the most woo woo thing you've ever done? What's the most woo woo thing I've ever done? This is so cheesy. I can't believe I'm admitting this. I was <laughs> my stepmom gave me this book called The Witch's Almanac. Oh my and gosh. And it came out in like seventy two. Really it's old, and I think I was like twelve at the time, and I had a crush on, the, on this teenager, this teenage guy, and I, there was a love spell in there. I was like, for unrequited love, <laughs> so I was like, I gathered laurel leaves and I made a fire outside, and I'm like, laurel leaves burn in fire, bring to me my heart's desire. I oh still remember God. it to this day, but that's literally the most woo woo thing and embarrassing thing that I'll say, I but love it. Open book, people. I love it. <laughs> did you ever, did he, did it, did it bring your heart's no, desire? No, sure didn't. Oh. <laughs> sure didn't. <laughs> I remember when I was young. But maybe heart's desire might mean something else. Oh, that's true. So looking at maybe true desires and not superficial or mediocre desires, because the universe works in interesting ways. It does. It doesn't always bring you what it you want, going, but what you need. Dude, you don't want that guy. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I've had enough train wrecks. Yeah, right. I feel like Amy Schumer. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Amy, I feel you. Yep, right here. Me too. Waving the hand in the air. I see you. (laughs) I'm in that club too. (laughs) It's hard. It is is hard. (laughs) I've given up. But, uh, well, Tristan, okay, so we've come to the end of our interview for today. And I want to thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much. But I would really love if you would take us out with some beautiful song. I don't know what it is, a piece of a song, maybe, you know, 
that we can hear your beautiful voice. Sure. Um, oh, there we go. I got it. Okay. I guess you don't need it. I guess you don't want me to repeat it. But everything I have to give, I give to you. It's not like we planned it. You tried to stay, but you could not stand it. To see me shut down slow as though it was an easy thing to do. Now listen when all of this around us will fall over. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You will shelter me, my love, and I will shelter you. Oh, oh. Beautiful. Thank beautiful, you. beautiful. Thank you. So weird you. to sing like oh acapella. Oh my God. Thank you so much, uh. Tristan. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody go online, Tristan Gatto, G-A-T-T-O dot com. Check out Daily Ohm. Daily Ohm. O-M. Ohm. And check out uh, all of his wonderful courses. I'm going to try that Spinal Reset. Sounds wonderful. It's going to be awesome. Thank you, Tristan. Thank and you. And hopefully we'll have you back on again. Please do. And know that the badass in me honors and recognizes the badass in you. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Wow. Wasn't that fun and educational? Well, that's it for this episode. So what is the most woo-woo thing you've ever done? We want to know about it. Email us or send us a voice memo to podcast at soundmindbodypodcast.com. And thanks for listening. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you like the podcast, give us a review on iTunes. It really helps new listeners find us. Thank you to our producer, Tim Edwards, and the Inbound Podcasting Network, And thank you to our guest, Tristan Gatto. Get in touch. I'm on Instagram at Sound Mind Body Podcast and on Twitter at Sheila Melody One. Or find us on Facebook or the web. Search for Sound Mind Body Podcast. I'm Sheila Melody. Join us next week as we explore, enlighten, and evolve.